Well, congratulations, first of all. Thank how are you. you. How are you feeling? I feel good. Uh, I got a little pain in my hand. I'm pretty sure I broke it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's nothing compared to, to getting a first round finish, especially over a guy like that. That was like best, best, best case scenario. And I wasn't, you know, really leaning on that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm on cloud nine right now. There was a lot of talk about your family being in the audience. Um, and if it would be, you know, an extra push or if it could be extra pressure. Doesn't doesn't seem like it was extra pressure, but can you kind of talk to me about what it felt like in there? Yeah, I thought about that. Um, but I just kind of like mentally had to check out. Um, I had to, I, you know, as I become a father and, you know, I'm taking care of them a lot of the time. You know, my wife stepped up when, when I get to the end of training camp, but most of the camp, I'm right there with her, you know, taking care of them. So I'm not being gritty and mean and getting in that that killer mode all the time it's not as easy um man i just knew that today i needed to wake up and be that killer and you mentioned um wanting your children to see you do what people talk about you doing all the time why was that important for you um you know it's <laughs> it's pretty personal but you know i don't mind talking about it i just i get all choked up <laughs> Um, just it's I, they're at the exact age that I have all my memories right now and I there's been plenty of times in my life where people talk to me about things that happened when I was younger and, and it doesn't really mean as much to me because they're just stories that people have um, you know that that I don't really relate with because I, I don't remember so I just wanted them to be able to, to have the experience and not just hear stories about me. How would you feel if one of them decided they wanted to fight? <laughs> I would um, encourage them um, to do whatever made them happy. Um, I would let them know that it's a very hard life and I don't, I don't wish it on anyone. You know, I think that if you gotta be a little, uh, you know, you gotta want it. You gotta be a little crazy, you know. It, as most of us are, we're, you know, a lot of a lot of the fighters are fighting demons or, you know, there's just something in them that, that makes them need to compete. So, I mean, if they have that in them and they feel like they have to prove something, I, I would never tell anyone not to chase their dreams, but I, I, I hope that they become scholars. You know, um, when you were getting emotional, I think the fans for a moment thought that maybe you were retiring. Was that ever an option coming into this fight? Not that I think you should. That's not what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. I mean, I, me and my wife talk about it all the time. It's just fight by fight right now. So, I mean, this was uh, my 40th fight. It, it meant a lot. But, you know, uh, to me it's about performing. And I performed. I performed well, I feel like. So, um, you know, we'll have that discussion. And, and yeah, I, <laughs> I'm not surprised that people are doing that because people tell me that almost every day. They're like, oh, you're still fighting? I thought you retired. Like, that's what, I'm at the point now where that's what people say to me all the time. So I, I get it, you know, I've been doing it a long time. But yeah, that's my decision and, and me and my family. And, and um, yeah, I'm still enjoying it some days more than others. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. And on that note, when do you want to get back in there? Um, maybe mid-year. Um, you know, I talked about maybe dropping to 135 um, just to, you know, switch it up, try something new. I don't, I know I can make it. I don't know how difficult it would be, but this was one of the easier cuts I've had. Uh, I feel like I'm just naturally a little lighter than I used to be. Um, I guess I'm just not holding on muscle like I was before, but yeah, uh, that's a possibility. Um, the one thing that I would love to do still is the, um, they're building a big arena, a 10,000 person arena in Palm Springs. Uh, that'll be done by the end of the year. Um, and if I could get the UFC to, to have a fight night in Palm Springs, like I'd stick around for that for sure. In a perfect world, who would be opposite you in the cage for that fight? Probably Uriah Faber, you know, see who the real king of Cali is. <laughs> That's great, I think the fans would Love that fight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Cub, congratulations.
Um, you said on Wednesday that um, it was time for the team captain to come out and get a win. You know, Rafa Garcia got one, Chris McCate. Now team captain got out, got a first round knockout. Um, how, how does that feel to, you know, to get that and to uh, keep, you know? Yeah, it, I mean, it feels great. Um, me and my partner, Monty, we, we have Bloodline um, Sports Agency, and we, we, we manage just a small group of really talented guys. And, um, you know, we're not trying to have this big roster. I just kind of got it thrown into my lap. Um, and they're guys that I've been helping out for a long time. And, and um, I just didn't want to see these guys go anywhere else and just be treated like another athlete on a roster. You know, some of these guys have like 150 guys on their roster. And I just, I want to give them special uh, attention. And, and so, yeah, I'm the team captain. I help manage, but I'm the team captain. I, I, I help train most of them. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we had a rough start. None of us won in the beginning because I think we all had a lot of things going on. Um, and, and so for us to kind of turn around and, and we're all winning now, it, it feels nice. Um, earlier um, today, uh, Charles Jordan called you out and said that he wants to fight you and uh, said that like you look at him weird and he, and he wants to fight you. What's your response to that? I, I like him. Uh, it was the first time I met him at the PI this week. I shook his hand and everything. I actually, I, I actually appreciate him. You know, he wasn't trying to, he's called me out maybe five or six times. And I even asked the UFC uh, for that fight a while ago because, you know, he's exciting. But I think he had a couple losses at the time, and it just didn't work out. But uh, you know, that's always an option. He, um, but yeah, I like him because he, he he calls me out respectfully. You know, he's like, "Yeah, I'm a fan, but I want to fight you." I can't hate on that. You know, if I had the opportunity when I was young to 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 call out somebody I really appreciated, and you want to test your skills, like I think that's cool. I think that's a way better approach than trying to be disrespectful. So yeah, I, I like him a lot. You, Aldo, and Oliveira got wins this, 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 this past month. I mean, OGs. Um, yeah, Clay Guida. <laughs> Clay Guida as well, man. Um, yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, I mean, Clay texts me before every fight, you know. And him and Darren, you know, they train together at Alpha Male now, but he still texts me just saying, you know, you know, you got this, buddy. And just, just, just he's, a, you know, they're all good dudes. Um, but, yeah, it makes me proud. Makes me proud to to be in that group and see all these guys keep doing it, you know. Because like I said uh, the other day, like I've been in this so long that there's been like multiple times where this new guy comes up and he's the next big thing, and then he loses a few after a little bit, and then he's retired, and it's like, what? Where'd that guy go? So like I've seen like people come up and down and up and down, like it, it's crazy. And then some of us are just still doing our thing. Um, and then finally for me, uh, this is just one I've always, always kind of wondered, um, you know, this is your 40th fight. If you could choose one rematch to have, what, wh who, who, who would you want to rematch? Oh, man, all of them. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think people always wanted to see the Aldo fight. It, it, you know, it got – it didn't really got started, you know. Like, I always felt like the fans wanted that one back and deserved it back. Um, but, yeah. I mean, we're both still around, so you never know. Awesome. Congrats to Cub. Thank you. Cub, tremendous job tonight. Uh, I think Miss Swanson had that NASA, NASA jacket, and it makes sense because your performance was out of this world. <laughs> what's going on with this longevity? Like, like my man said, with the, what's, what was in the water in the WEC? Ronnie Yaya, Dom Cruz, Jose Aldo, yourself, you guys are still around, and not just around, but relevant and turning away the, the up-and-comers? Well, I, I really felt like it was a blessing in disguise, you know, because we literally did everything the UFC fighters did um, just on a little bit smaller of a scale. So we were able to, um, you know, get all that media things, but just on a little bit less scale. The, the fights were big, but they weren't as big. So we, I feel like we all kind of got mentored in, in a sense. Um, and then we really, you know, we're like a brotherhood. We, we you know, every fight, we, the UFC was pretty stable. The WC was still, you know, they'd be like, 
in the fighter meetings like hey there's an executives here i need you guys to go out there and do your thing and we all would would take that challenge like yep okay we're gonna go out there and fight our hearts out and so i think doing that for a while and then us getting to go over to the ufc and show that we weren't a lower organization you know we were just we just happened to be over here not you know and we got to fight on a bigger stage so I think that once we got the opportunity to fight in the UFC on the bigger pay-per-view cards and stuff like that, everybody shined. No doubt, man. And um